And the last talk is going to be given by Lorenzo Maschio, analytical abedicio Raman spectra of crystalline systems. Thank you very much. So it's my turn to thank the organizer for letting me uh, speak into this uh, very extremely nice room and place. So today I'm going to present you the work we did in implementing the analytical ab initio calculation of Raman spectra, and especially Raman intensities of uh, Raman peaks in crystalline systems. It is a work that took uh, several years, actually was much more complicated than we expected but uh, we are very proud of the results that, uh, that I can present today. But before going into these, the details of scientific part of this talk, let me make a small digression to jazz music. So uh, jazz music is a, a musical style that spans over more than 10 decades and has seen much many uh, notable players that make this music, uh, one of the most important styles in modern music. And there are different styles that evolved from the Dixieland of first times to the smooth jazz of more recent. But personally, my favorite style is the bebop, who evolved uh, around 40s and 50s of last century, with uh, most prominent uh, examples uh, like uh, Charlie Parker and other players. And this is an example of a tune of a bebop jazz from Charlie Parker. And uh, what are the characteristics of bebop is that it is represented by uh, played very fast, an alternation of silences and clustered notes. There's a great variety in the intensity the notes are played. And uh, uh, there is an instrument virtuosity for the players and so solos are played, and uh, it's very dependent on the skills of the player. And I was, I'm playing the electric bass myself, and I was playing this tune a few weeks ago, and then I noticed that the profile on how the notes are displayed on uh, a score in these bars could remind, actually, <laughs> something that I was also working on in the same period, that was the Raman spectrum of quartz. And in fact, there can be a strong connection between these two very different fields. In fact, the Raman spectra has more or less the same features, so there is a, an alternation of very empty zones and very uh, clustered peaks. And there is a great variety, actually. It's an experimental technique that can measure up to five orders of magnitude in the intensity of peaks. And the ability of the uh, person who is making the uh, measurement and of the quality of the instrument, instrumental setup is uh, critical in uh, retrieving uh, good information out from the spectra. Okay, so after making you aware of this connection that I noticed in two important aspects of my life, uh, it's better <laughs> if I move to more scientific part. So uh, why is Raman uh, spectroscopy of solids uh, pretty interesting? So. Uh, well, today has been quite uh, a day of soft matter. Uh, now I'm dealing more with hard matter and crystals. And I'm showing you an example of uh, diopside, that is uh, this crystal picture here. And what is interesting is that in crystals, you can actually orient, polarize the light, and orient the sample, and measure uh, several different uh, spectra of the same uh, crystal according to the orientation of these two. Uh, parameters. And uh, this is an example where there are six independent directions that can provide actually six different spectra. And the different modes are decoupled, so you can see some symmetries in one direction, some symmetry in another direction. But here, the skill of uh, the experimentalist is very important because it's very difficult to orient these two parameters in a perfect way. And that's an example where the simulation becomes very important and comes in. 
So this is the experimental spectrum. If we simulate the same spectrum, I'm not going into detail here, but look at the <coughs> sorry uh, at this peak on the right, you can see that while it appears in all directions in the experimental spectrum, the, the theoretical simulation does not uh, see it, and this means that the orientation was not perfect in the experimental setup. But uh, an experimentalist cannot know this beforehand, but has to have a guide to perform a correct experiment and the correct alignment of all the parameters. Okay, now a little bit about the implementation. So we implemented this method for simulating the Raman spectra of solids into the crystal code that is developed in our group in Torino since many, many years. And uh, the characteristic of this code with respect to other solid state codes is that it uses a local basis set of Gaussian functions. And if I have to name a few advantages of Gaussian functions with respect to plane waves, is that, that uh, they allow the use of the same language and tools as in molecular quantum chemistry. And in fact, they allow you to compute on the same footing uh, molecules, polymers, labs, and bulks uh, with continuity, with the same parameters, and allow an easy use of hybrid functional that only recently have faced in the plane wave uh, realm, but have been used since several years or decades uh, through CRYSTAL. Uh, so we already seen something about Raman. Here we are talking about non-resonant Raman, so uh, the laser is not exciting any uh, electronic ex excitation. And uh, uh, formally, while the infrared intensities are a second derivative of the total energy, once with respect to atomic displacement and uh, once with respect to the field, the uh, Raman tensor elements within the plasma approximation that allows you to uh, sum over all the state and actually consider the static polarizability of the system is a third order derivative. Of course, there are several ways to do a uh, derivative. You can uh, do either the uh, electric field part or the atomic displacement part numerically or both, uh, which is problematic, but this is uh, not numerically stable and, not, and uh, very costly. So we aim at analytical derivatives all these parameters. Moreover, the form of the electric field operator in the Hamiltonian periodic system is particularly nasty because uh, the molecular electric field operator is not consistent with the periodic boundary conditions and you can easily see it because this breaks translational periodicity. And so uh, the correct form of the operator that has been developed several years ago uh, contains a derivative with respect to the k vector. This uh, creates a lot of problems, also because we also want to treat this derivative analytically, where it has been treated in, in other approaches numerically. We want to tr treat this analytically. And of course, how this combines with other derivatives present is not uh, really straightforward. And uh, I'm not going here, I have, of course, no time to go through all the I think 96 equations we have in the paper that has been now accepted in JCP, but uh, generally uh, the problem is that there is this uh, derivative with respect to K that represents a charge flow term that uh, uh, appear, pops up everywhere in this very complicated expression and then one has to deal with it also because some elements, matrix elements of this Q that you see below here are undetermined and they are supposed to cancel out and uh, how to see how it behaves is it, quite complicated. Uh, but basically what we do to do a Raman calculation, we need a couple perturbed Hartree-Fock to get the perturbation at the second order with respect to the field and the gradients with respect to the integrals. We totally avoid uh, the couple perturbed equations with respect to the atomic displacement that would uh, pop up in, in uh, uh, naive uh, representation of these derivatives, but uh, through the usual tricks of uh, gradients in molecular field, we try to avoid it. Okay, so now I come to some examples. Uh, this is the spectrum of uh, uh, quartz, alpha quartz, 
and uh, in the top panel you see the experimental spectrum, in the bottom panel we see our simulated spectrum, and uh, you can see that the high frequency part of the spectrum is remarkably good, uh, the low frequency part is less good, but mainly because we are not able to simulate the width of the peak. And uh, while uh, the alpha quartz has this low frequency peak that is very broad, while we simulate as very narrow, and the intensity in, in the end is proportional to the area of the peak. So this is the reason why it's not so optimal. We can also do very complicated systems like a pi rope. And here you see that uh, the comparison with respect to the experiment, these again are two independent directions, uh, is very good and everywhere you see a peak in the experiment that is the red curve that does not appear in our simulated one, you can uh, draw back, uh, you go back to a leakage from the other direction. So again, this is an, experiment, an example of an experiment that had problems because they didn't know actually what they were expected to see. This is a spectrum of a bit more than 10 years ago. Uh, I have three other examples that we are currently computing. This is a powder spectrum, not a directional, of uh, jedite. Uh, and here again you can see that uh, we can catch all the important features of this spectrum remarkably well. And uh, most importantly we have a total deconvolution of this spectrum, so we can see uh, how this spectrum is built, and even uh, very small uh, peaks, like here you see that some peaks that are supposed to uh, be active, Raman active, are very small. And there are some uh, experimentalists that make some, uh, according to um, group theory, they know how many peaks should uh, be seen, and they try to assign all these peaks. But here we clearly see that some peaks cannot be assigned uh, only on the basis of the experiment. And so we can say to this experimentalist that uh, these will never be seen. Uh, okay, this is an example of a collaboration we have with Cedric Atare in Nancy, who is actually uh, doing what I'm, I've already said a couple of times. He is able to orient the sample since he knows our result and can actually get the different directions which are really independent with no leakage of the peaks. And this is a nice example of interplay of theory and experiment. And uh, we have a collaboration with the group of physical chemistry in our department, uh, Professor Silvia Bordiga, in computing uh, the Raman spectra of uh, metal organic frameworks, which are quite challenging uh, systems with uh, a few uh, more than 100 atoms in the unit cell. And again, uh, the agreement of, these, uh, of the computed and the measured spectrum is extremely good. And here we can provide some information because we see that in this case, the peaks are the convolution of uh, different symmetries of the vibration of the organic ligands in phase and out of phase that since uh, they are uh, quite far one from the other, they uh, actually don't care if they are in phase or out of phase, they are at the same frequency, but they are all active. And what we are currently doing is trying to introduce defects in this quite complicated structure. And what is seen is that if you introduce defects, then these decouple and this uh, one peak splits into several peaks. This is another example. And so the conclusion, so that now we can uh, compute uh, Rama spectra with crystal through a new formulation uh, that uses the couple perturbed artifoc or cone sham method. And uh, it's very stable and very easy to use since everything is analytical. And uh, I try to convince you that uh, the comparison with the experiment is very good. We have a uh, few papers that are now accepted or submitted or coming out. And uh, uh, I thank you all for your attention. So thank you very much for this quite impressive work. Now, questions? Yeah, please. Yeah, it's very impressive. So, so I just want to make sure I understood an, an, an aside that you made, 
which was about the widths of the peak. So yeah. in, in fact, so are you doing a Lorentzian broadening or something? Exactly. So we have only the height and we are putting a Lorentzian with fixed uh, width. So you're, so you're, yeah. So you're computing the, the amplitude and the, and the position, but, exactly. but not. Rightly, that the coupling operator is unbound and you have periodic boundary conditions. How did you solve this problem? You probably mentioned it, but I didn't quite. Yeah, with, it. with this derivative with respect to the k vector. So, yes. the correct form of the, of the operator, and if you introduce this uh, derivative with respect to k, this uh, makes the operator bound. Ah, okay. So, you actually get an artificial folding through the derivative with K. Yeah, this, is, this has been developed in, in the 90s as the correct form of the operator by... Oh, well known. ...underbuilt and... More questions? Okay, if not, let's thank the speakers and all the speakers of the morning session.